Hello. Today I will tell you about the mistakes that you should not make when transplanting seedlings so that they do not die. Therefore, if you have to transplant any seedlings. For example, in my case, I will show on sweet peppers and eggplants. This also applies to transplanting tomatoes. Well, I'll tell you right away how to understand that it's time to transplant seedlings into pots. I will show on the example of peppers and can also be determined on tomatoes. Look at these cotyledon leaves. These are the lowest and first leaves that appear on the sprout. And these are two real leaves, two more have already begun to appear. In total, there are already four true leaves on the plant, which means that the root system will already begin to grow. After all, the larger the root system, the more leaves and the leaves themselves become larger. Therefore, now you need to start transplanting seedlings. Since if you wait another week, then the roots will grow in the container and intertwine with neighboring plants. And when transplanting, you will severely damage the roots. And because of this, peppers after transplantation will stop growing for several weeks. And if the roots are severely damaged, the plants may die. Now, how to understand from eggplants, their leaves grow one at a time, and not in pairs like peppers and tomatoes. Therefore, as soon as the second true leaf appears on the eggplants, you can start transplanting. The second mistake that is often made when transplanting seedlings is the wrong cups in which you will grow your future seedlings. Dark plastic cups work best. The main thing in their bottom is to make holes. As you can see, I made five holes myself with a soldering iron. Hole diameter 5 mm, so that excess moisture quickly flows out. Cups must be black. Transparent will not work. Because the roots from ultraviolet light quickly turn yellow, dry out, function poorly and, accordingly, your seedlings will grow poorly. And the glass must be at least one pint in volume. The third mistake that is often made is the soil that is used for growing seedlings. You can use purchased ready-made soil, but to fill a large number of cups, it will take a lot of it, and this is expensive. Therefore, I have been taking soil from the garden since autumn, or this can be done in spring. Garden soil should be sifted from stones and plant debris. Then I mix it with sand and cocoa in proportions of three parts soil, one part sand and one part cocoa. Thus, the garden soil becomes airy and moisture intensive. I don't immediately put fertilizers into a glass, but then I just feed it with liquid fertilizers once every two weeks. Now I'll actually show you how to transplant seedlings correctly so as not to make mistakes. In cups, you need to make a recess deeper and wider, it is desirable that the soil is slightly moist, then it does not sprinkle. Now another mistake that beginner gardeners often make when transplanting. Use a spoon to extract the sprout, which can be easily cut off the roots. I use a plastic fork, or you can use a metal fork, so as not to damage the root system. We retreat one inch from the sprout. We insert the fork to the very bottom and with such movements we pick out the sprout itself from all sides and let me show you the root system now. You still need to try so that the clod of earth does not fall apart, for this, water the seedlings the day before transplanting. Here we see our roots. The whole clod of earth will not fall apart, due to the fact that it is held by small roots. The root system is already quite large roots of this length. No need to pinch them, and also no need to cut off. When they grow somewhere like this longer than 8 inches, then we pinch them. Now look what I'm doing. Now I am removing the excess soil, and you see, I am not afraid to carry out some manipulations. Nothing bad will happen to him, and I plant him in a glass. Now I'll tell you right away about another mistake that beginners often make. This is not deep enough. When transplanting, the sprout must be buried along these two cotyledon leaves. It is impossible to bury below the internode, and before it, it is not only possible but necessary to bury. We do the same with seedlings of tomatoes and eggplant. On the trunk that we sprinkled with soil, additional roots will soon form. And on top of the soil in a cup, I cover it with a thin layer of coconut substrate. This allows you to reduce watering, because the coconut substrate is very moisture intensive. And also fungal diseases will never appear on the surface of the coconut substrate, seedlings will not get sick. Then we water abundantly. Since there are holes in the bottom of the glass, we do watering until we see that water is dripping from the bottom of the glass so we do only the first watering. Especially as you saw that my soil was dry and I need to wet it to the bottom. Now the next tip to be done after transplanting seedlings. If you do it just as carefully, then the seedlings will not experience much stress. I practically did not break the root system. 
Then you can feed immediately after transplantation with any means that stimulates the growth of roots. Ask your local garden store and they'll tell you. This will now greatly help the seedlings to build up a lush root system and take root in a new place. You will see how within a couple of days, she's starting to grow. So friends, I continue to transplant my seedlings, and if you have any questions, then ask them in the comments under this video. I wish you strong seedlings and a good day. See you in new videos.